listening to the Student Music Network. This is Talia Robinson, and despite their name, they are not going anywhere. They are here to stay in your playlists. You do not want to miss out on two-year break. Hello, how are we doing? Hello, Talia. Hello. Oh, hello, hello, Talia. I like that little really good intro. I enjoyed that intro. So as a way of introducing yourself, Brad, George, I'm actually quite intrigued. When you were growing up, whose posters did you have on your walls? I'm going to answer the question, and I think you're going to answer it with the, the, the exact same answer. The poster, or the posters that I used to have on my wall when I was younger, I, I think one of the first ones was Busted, mm. for sure. Okay, and, yeah. Um, I don't know if the, if people who are of a certain age still know who Busted are, <laughs> but they, they, they are great. Poster on the wall? I, the only, I had a Doctor Who poster, I remember that. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I just remember Bullet for My Valentine with Mice and Men being on there. And I definitely had some form of busted. Um, yeah. yeah, I thought so. All your posters that you had in your room, George, you ended up in our music video. They did. Every single like Kerrang poster that I had um, ended up in our music video for Loving Every Day, which features Charlie Simpson from Busted. Oh, la <laughs> la. There we go. Little yeah, name drop, little name drop. <laughs> we turned the corner of a studio into a fake bedroom. And we just oh, spent yeah. probably two hours ripping up pieces of Kerrang! magazines and old posters of George to stick them all on the wall. That was yeah. most of the day, wasn't it? Not like Yeah, not a lot of the day was actually <laughs> putting posters on our, on our fake bedroom. So to potential fans and listeners, give us a rundown of your sound then. How would you guys describe your music? People have called us Chav Rock. Um, Chav Rock? <laughs> us, uh, that's, that's a genre that's gone under my radar <laughs> i didn't know it existed either <laughs> we've been told that we're we sound like Enter shikari and a mixture of don broker and like you know them them colliding and stuff i'd say that we definitely take influences from both those bands um probably a bit of yumi at six as well we're just a mashup of alternative rock metal pop and synth and electric all just sort of squashed into one. Oh, noise we make noise we make noise I think you're absolutely like cementing your own mark on the scene already which is which is pretty pretty good i mean you've received so much praise from like kerrang radio one you know like when my family and my friends like i heard you on radio one the other night i heard you i'm like oh yeah cool i think i don't fully believe it so <laughs> i do it with a lot of things even when i'm going on a cool holiday trip until it's until i'm there it's not yeah. real so it's not happening are you guys pretty close in the band we've been friends for years now uh yeah mm, friends with before, George the longest all the band before yeah. the band um but yeah no we've all we're a close close little unit and we like the people that we normally get working with us and helping us out are normally people that we trust and become either become friends because we i guess can tell that they're the right people for us or they are friends that are already helping us like we're definitely a tight unit and uh, we make sure that we hang around with people that we enjoy and care about so that we can all stay humble and focused and George is definitely one of those people that exactly. well, it doesn't doesn't feel like hard work if you're all mates, does it? So. Yeah. Your current EP, like the few little tracks you've got out at the moment, um, lyrically, it's heavy on the kind of protecting your peace, I want to say. Like the title of like Don't Bring Me Down in general, or if you want to look more into like the lyrics, you've got like the killing with kindness kind of message in um in unoriginal is it's very mental health forward is that is that something that you guys are kind of pushing in your music the e the first ever ep that was back when we sort of didn't really know what we were going to be which is very pop punk was sort of about a breakup uh, yeah. but touched on mental health and then the do you want to find love album definitely touched on mental health and about being alone and single and going on dates and then you know getting let down or not sure if you're ready to move on to find someone else and all that kind of stuff and it tapped on mental health a lot there and then this next piece of record I'd say when we started writing it we've all kind of got past the lovey dovey stage of like we're like well we don't really have relationship problems anymore we kind of spoke about them at the moment so but we still want to keep it you know true to like um, like some kind of message that's worth people listening to um, and then we realised that we're kind of annoyed and frustrated with the world and how people can be and stuff so it kind of came from like people can be toxic and how that can have a you know an impact on your health um so like don't bring me down is kind of about you know 
don't not letting those people affect you and kind of moving on if, if they're not worth your time then move on so um it um, definitely is an empower i'd like to think it's empowering about standing up for yourself and you know being kind to yourself and essentially kind to others because sometimes people say horrible things but they're in a bad place or there's kind of an album about that letting go of those problems and kind of addressing them but you know standing true to yourself like you said i'm trying my best <laughs> It's because um, we've got a music video with like we've created two factions and they're against each other and one. Well, and... yeah, I wanted to get onto this about your music videos. I think they are the coolest thing. It <laughs> very much reminds me of um, it's what like I've seen Calva Louisa doing with the whole sci-fi kind of with the the accompanying music videos. It's very much like cyberpunk. Essentially, yeah, our music video is very cyberpunky, sci-fi, futuristic, about a city that's essentially creating clones to fill the city to work for the city and if you're not we couldn't really fully show it in the video but i like to think that the clones are like the creatives and the people with a voice that the system has decided to not allow to essentially you know like in hunger games you've got the people that live in the city and they're living the best lives and then you've got the people living in the sectors and they're yeah. not living their best lives it's essentially like that if you're outspoken creative uh just just a bit different um, not the perfect human that some society in this future want them to be. Um, you end up just sort of in the lower parts of the city working, you know, at a curfew and have to be inside and all this stuff. Whereas there's a higher up set of people that get to do whatever they want and live their life however they want. Would you say your next album coming up is a, is a concept album then? It should yeah. definitely be listened to in order, I think, because there's like some cool really interludes in there and stuff that like us and our producer have got together and done. Um, so it all sort of flows, and maybe it is a concept album. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I think maybe <laughs> I'm scared to say it because I've never said it before, and this is the first time I've said it in an interview. And then if I confirm it, I've got to continue saying it's a concept album. <laughs> but right, it's, it's not confirmed, but it it's might not be. Confirmed, <laughs> but maybe it is. Um, are you guys tattoo guys? Do we have any tattoos? I do have two dices on my ankle, but so do a few of us because we went on tour with Royals and we did a song together and the album, the artwork cover was two dice and it was our first ever tour we'd ever done. And we were like, oh, come on, let's just get a silly little one. Like It doesn't need to be anything crazy. So we all got these two dice on our ankles. Uh, not all of us. Some people chickened out. Sorry. George. <laughs> no, you, no, you're not chickened out. You, you're, you're within your right to not want one. But anyone <laughs> that did want one... Uh, Got, got that so technically i have two and there might be a third on my bum that i got in magaluf but that was <laughs> and uh that was a silly a silly a silly one that's actually uh george's brother's name yeah so, it's a lovely friendship tattoo the what's, friendship what's the that never that? Know. i'm interested if you were if you had or you were going to have a tattoo related to the band i'm interested what you would design Oh, do you know what? Actually, That's quite some, interesting. some fans have already got tattoos of ours, like tattoos oh, okay. of stuff from our. So I think the Resistance logo mm. and the Regime logo from the Light It Up cycle is sort of. Yeah. I think someone, a few people have got that because a couple of them. someone's got the Resistance logo and then their clone number because in the videos, everyone's a clone with yeah. a number. So I guess they're kind of already out there, the, the designs that yeah. people want to choose from. I think if I had to, it would probably be that sort of like if I could if I had if you was like you have to get a sleeve, uh, and it has to be based on your band, then I'd probably get like the light up sort of skyscrapers up the arm and like have the character that we've created with his cloak that he's a bit like Assassin's Creed vibes mm. kind of infiltrating the stuff and then maybe some other stuff to connect it would be like I don't know some of the logos from it and maybe some of the lightsabers and the guns and stuff just to show that it's like a whole piece of that light up. Well, some someone messaged us recently about getting the skyscraper from the Take It Down uh, cover. Yeah. And I thought that was a really cool idea, to be fair. Yeah, because it looks like a... Well, it just Because it's done so well by uh, Make North, the artist, it looks like something you would see in a, in a movie or like a or a poster for a film, the, that, yeah. that kind of artwork because of how good he is. I'm intrigued. What's been your your proudest moment then so far as the band? I'm I'm usually here just uh, for like logistical reasons, whether Brad forgets a date or something. But I'll try and answer this question. Um, 
I I think, and it's sort of something we've forgotten about, and it's like, but it, I think it was having Charlie Simpson on on a track, that was insane. Like when you when you really think about it now, it's sort of it's obvious to us. Like oh yeah, we had Charlie Simpson on a track, blah, blah, whatever. But if you really think about it, someone who we used to listen to when we were kids is on a song with us. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. That is mental, I think, yeah. Like, I think, yeah, maybe I would, because it's been a thing now for like a year and a half or two years, it's kind of, it's just part of, part of our life. So you forget how important it would have been at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I cried, I cried, I cried. I don't think you've ever told me this before. I, I didn't cry <laughs> of like, of like sat, but I was like, I think I had a moment of like, appreciating my achievements and that I've, I probably went back to because my first ever show was a busted show at Wembley Arena when I was like 10. And my mum took me and I used to be like, they're so cool. I wish I was like them. And then, you know, 20, like 15, 16 years later, or whenever it was, I got Charlie Simpson singing on my record. So I think hearing it was a bit like, well, mm. well, you know, little Brad doesn't know that this is going to happen one day. Kind yeah. Of there was, you know. <laughs> I think that's definitely one of them. And then I think actually probably um, I feel like the one of our show earlier shows back when I actually really rate our show at Macbeth when we were just as um, we were still doing like pop punk and we hadn't fully explored what we were going to be yet. And we put on like our first biggest headline show, which um, was probably only to like what 150 people. Yeah, maybe about that. And but I think that was like a moment of like hearing people singing our songs back. So it was our first mm. experience of like it's not just our friends and family coming to these shows. Like people we don't know are actually like shouting their shouting at the top of their lungs, and that was probably a big moment for me. Not a big venue. It's just the the concept of what was happening there was quite a big. Yeah something that we'd never experienced properly before i think all of us had never experienced people we don't know singing songs people no, came from, but they came from ireland Someone yeah wales ireland. and ireland yeah, it was and crazy. That, that, that was like our first experience of it all so i think that's a big moment as well oh wow no my my favorite gigs are always like the little teeny tiny sweat boxes so yeah i think that's that's everything. It's been a it's been a lovely little way to uh to kickstart my birthday off today. So well, it's your birthday today. Oh, happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday, Talia! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you awesome. for having us. Well, thank you so much. Have a lovely birthday.